Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, The Bistro, where we will discuss today's hottest consumer trends, predict the future with consumer experts, and learn how elite businesses and entrepreneurs continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Hello and welcome to The Bistro. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Elena Spinola. On this podcast episode, we're going to delve into a unique concept that takes the idea of using boardroom business strategies into the dating world. Now, we're not talking about going out with your coworkers, rather the idea of how successful business strategies can translate into successful dating strategies. So stay with us. This is going to be a fun discussion. Our guest today is Jen Hecht. She is the chairwoman of the Dating Advisory Board and has learned through extensive experience in the business world how to apply that background to making connections for busy business professionals. Jen is also the host of a radio show with a live webcast in 135 countries that discusses different subject matter in different areas of business. Jen, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Elaine, for having me here. I appreciate it. Uh, Well, we appreciate having you because this is a really unique topic and one that I think is so fascinating. So tell me, how did you first make the link between applying business experience to making personal connections? Well, for me, uh, so I, my background is in telecommunications. So I've been vice president of a telecommunications company for now 12 and a half years. Um, wow, well, that's a long time. <laughs> time flies. <laughs> time flies, right, exactly. And so I have different customers in different areas. So I have defense contractors, nonprofits, and I have a lot of nonprofits, but they each work very differently. But so I know how their business operates, right? So when I found myself back in the dating world after many moons, there was so overwhelming. There were so many apps to choose from. I mean, there's a new one coming out every day, basically. And so I thought, how do I sift through the clutter? I'm very successful in business and, and knowing, you know, what our core values as a customer or for our customers, knowing what value we'll provide to them. And then knowing how that customer runs internally, what's the, how does their communication infrastructure work? So I thought to myself, well, it's got to be a way. Business and dating isn't very different, right? You're talking, and it's about building relationships. That's right, right? And um, and I always say, like, even if you're getting married, I mean, in business, I mean, if you have boards, right? Those are very important. So sure, it's marriage is one of the biggest business mergers you will ever ever have. Great way to great way to look at it, right? That's true. So think about it in business. So, and I hear like so if you're really successful in business, but you're not having that good of luck in the dating world, like that's where you're using business strategies that we use in business boardroom to translate into the dating world. So, for instance, I'll give you an example: Farmers Only, right? I'll give a shout out to Farmers Only, right? Sure. They're very hyper focused. They know their core market. They know if you are a farmer or you want a farming lifestyle, mm-hmm. that this is the site for you. It's very niche. Sure. Right? And most businesses, have, what, what's your mission statement? But now you are the personal brand. Right. right? Going out there, you have to know what you want. Right. So, and I kind of t- took some of those strategies and, you know. So it's almost being intentional around your personal relationship just as you are extremely intentional with your business relationships. Well, think about that. I mean, you were spending most of your day in the business business world and in the family. And, you know, some of my closest friends are in my from my work, sure. right? Because you're around them for so long. Right. And, and not many people realize, especially, I mean, I have my background's in sales, and they just think, oh, we'll have to get every client, like, because that's money coming in the door. But do you really want to work with that negative Nancy client? Right. When they're yelling and screaming and saying, why didn't you get this done? And and, uh, and you have to think about that. And now, if you're having that in the in your personal life, it affects both. Sure, sure. So, in, so what you're saying is in your dating and personal life, you're saying, well, I don't have to be friends or have a relationship with everyone I come across. Let me be a little bit more specific about what I want and what I need. Right. I mean, you, you know, now you want, I heard this one saying, it said, you know, I'm not worried about if I'm not so worried if they like me, I'm worried if I like them. Yeah. Right. And I wish I'd, I had that in my 20s. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, here, let's talk specifically about how someone who excels in their professional life can use their strengths and skills on the job in the dating scene. Let's get a little bit more specific. OK, so I would say when you're looking yourself in the mirror, because I always say, I kind of joke, but it's like before you start swiping right, you better get the reflection in the mirror on point. So it always starts with within yourself, sure, right? And surrounding yourself with positivity, positive people, and when you're going out there. And so some of the strategies that, that we use is is literally writing down your core non-negotiables. So what do you really want in your partner? You know, it could be different in your 20s and your 40s. Right. Right? So you should rewrite them, perhaps. You should rewrite them, right, exactly, revisit that. And um, so go through that exercise of here are the non-negotiables I want. One, you're putting it out there into the universe. and But also now you know, okay, here are the things and red flags. 
So if you get that, kind of use your intuition a little bit more, as I think we should. Mm-hmm. Um, when you have that like, gut feeling like, ooh, like, I don't really, this isn't working. working. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but using intuition and writing down those core non-negotiables and then being specific. And I think another thing, especially translating from business to personal, is that in business, I don't think we ask for a lot of referrals versus um, in the dating world, too. Sure. We don't ask our friends, hey, do you know anyone? Like, I could say, hey, Elaine, do you know anyone that I may be a good fit for? And you could say, well, not right now. I, I have to think about it. But then maybe the next time you're in an event, you're like, oh, you know, Jen, this guy would be a good fit for Jen or something like that. But it, if we're not asking enough. Sure. Right. Sure. And especially think about if you're friends with that other person. Now, some people may be uncomfortable, like, well, what if it goes bad? But it's not up to that. Right. right. I and mean, you have to have like clear, concise. I'll give you this referral, but I don't want to hear of it if it goes bad. Right. <laughs> right? Well, we do that in business too, right, exactly. sometimes. Right. Like, listen, I know someone that might be a good fit for your business. I'm going to leave you to at it. Exactly. <laughs> You guys take it from here. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I like what you talked about the non-negotiables because I think we we do tend to do that in business. There's certain things that are not a good fit for us, even if the money's there. But that's you might say, you know what? I hear your needs. I don't exactly do that. Let me refer you to someone else. Exactly. Or you might say, well, I understand what you're looking for. I don't want to do that. Right. In business, because it's not a good fit for you professionally. But maybe we don't do that personally. I guess if we're if we're dating or developing a relationship, you just take it as it comes. Right. But what you're saying is understand what your non-negotiables are and go from there. Right. Because, I mean, if you're you're wanting a relationship and getting married, Tinder is probably not the one for you an right. app to be on. Right. Right. <laughs> so knowing the different apps. And I also say from a strategy perspective, just so in business, you wouldn't sell 20 different products and be really hyper focused and very, really good at all of them. Right. I've seen it. I've seen it with telecom, you know, telecommunications companies where they're like, well, we sell the gamut. We sell everything. Well, you can't be hyper focus and be really successful in imp- implementation and project management, etc. You know, but they come like something with like Bennett, right? So, you know, been there, been come for years and, and we have, you know, two or three products that we sell, which they're hyper focused on knowing that, right? So I would say pick two or three apps to start with, because if you start going in there and you're on every single app, it can be completely overwhelming. You don't know how to filter. And, you know, some of them I like because, you know, you're able to manage it yourself. So you're not getting inundated all the time with different um, people contacting you. Sure. So hone it down is what hone you're saying. Hone it down. Yeah. Find out which ones work for you right. and stick with that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So as important as it is for someone to have a, quote, advisory board to bounce ideas and strategies off with that work, it's equally important to have an advisory board to discuss relationship strategies. Let's talk more about that. And also, how is that different from just leaning on friends and family for advice? That's a great question. <laughs> um, well, you know, you think about it, when businesses create their boards, um, usually they're not family. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And some of them could be friends, but most likely they're not. Right. So there are subject matter experts in their field that can help that company grow and be the best to make, you know, be successful and, you know, obviously make a lot of money. But when you translate that into the dating world, you know, we don't really have a board. I mean, I didn't have a board to come come and say, like, here are your strengths, here are your weaknesses. Now, and that goes back to being coachable. Yes, so, very important. Very important. When I grew up, I mean, I played, you know, number one tennis for Costa Carolina, and I had this background as being an athlete from a very young age. So luckily, I had different coaches. I had four or five different coaches. I had forehand, backhand, serve, volley. So everybody was subject matter where my weaknesses were to be able to play the best that I could and get that scholarship to play tennis for a coastal game and then it happened. So um, having coaches and be coachable and I think is so important in business and in personal life as well. Most of I mean, you look at the most successful people um, out there, they all have mentors. Yeah. They all have coaches. They always have someone to, to reach out to. So I would say when you're you have putting together your own personal board because um, we we do that at the dating advisory board, but we're like showing you how to do it. Um, some of the quick tips that I'll give you on that, I mean, it goes deeper like what you need to do, like <laughs> vetting process us, etc. Sure. But I um, mean, for the most part, you know, pick those people that that um, are very strong in an area that you are not. Okay, right. So think about that. So they can say, okay, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this. But what advice can you give to me? I mean, it could be a dating coach it could be I mean, it could be it could be a friend. I mean, it could be friends, but I wouldn't I would stay away from family because sure. they may if they want you to get married, they would say, well, you should do this. You should go on. You should just you know marry this person. Sure. But they don't realize that, that you're going to have to deal with that person. That's your life. Right. And you're right? really looking for sort of objective advice from someone who's not uh, 
how do I say this? Kind of like in business, like mm-hmm. you said, you don't always just want to take adv- advice from family and friends when it comes to your business. Right. So perhaps with your personal life, what you're saying is maybe it's not yeah. best to always just rely on mom for right. all your yeah. uh, advice in love. Right. I yeah. mean, my dad, it's so funny because he gives me the best advice and he'll like come correct on me. He's like, Jen, you know, he always reminds myself of my 15 year old stuff. He's like, would she do that? No. Right. 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 So, um, but I would say even having different, like, so for me, I have different, I have men on my board and I have women on my board, right? So you want to keep it small. You don't want to get too crazy. But um, but that would be one of my one of my biggest things is saying, like, reach out, really look at yourself. How can I improve? How can I grow? There's so many podcasts out there that are unbelievable to help you grow as a person. Because like I said, if you don't get the reflection in the mirror on point, then um, you're not going to be good in a relationship. If you're not the very best in a relationship, like, that's kind of doing yourself and the other person a disservice. Sure. And that sounds like that's what this board is here to do, help you kind of be your best self and help right. you in your weaknesses and, and also guide you along with your strengths, too. Exactly. So specifically, how does someone use the Dating Advisory Board? So um, we, if you could go on the datingadvisoryboard.com, we actually have a TV show um, that we bring in subject matter experts from particular fields. So it could be marriage th- therapists, um, therapists in general, dating coaches, uh, online writing profile coaches, um, but also media and branding because personal branding is a big deal because now you are your brand in the dating world. So how you present yourself here and because it's such a small town wherever you, I mean, it's a small town every in every city, but especially in Washington, D.C., everybody knows everyone. So I always say like be human in dating. <laughs> well, especially as well when things are so um, on social media. Yeah. You know, it's even smaller, really. Mm-hmm. People who don't know you that well feel like they do because they see it on right. social media. Yeah, and especially if you if you know you know if you're on all the different platforms, okay. right? So um, so from the dating advisor where we go, it's called Brain Trust. So you can go on there and you can learn um, from the different I- industry experts. Right. We had um, Dr. Darcy Sterling on. Um, so she's a host of um, E! Entertainment's Famously Single. Mm-hmm. And that episode was a big eye opener. Um, so I look forward to new guests coming on as well. And so we're, we're putting together different packages and, and stuff like that. So Awesome. So you mentioned there's so many different podcasts out there. Yours included. Your webcast is a great resource for people. As you mentioned, you have all these subject matter experts to really get people sort of motivated, excited, yeah. and know where to start. Well, and also... the you don't have to be in the dating world to learn from these, you know, subject CEOs, entrepreneurs in their particular field. You have business knowledge that you can apply as well. Gotcha. Well, I've got a question for you. Yeah. So when someone starts to make a connection outside of their professional life, maybe even find love, I guess the question is, how can that then translate back into their business life? So really, as a more fulfilled person personally, can the professional life continue to thrive? Right. I think they go both in tandem, right? So <clears throat> I would say um, if you're happy in your home life, it should translate into business. And then business is the same. But I always say if in business you're going to have those negative Nancy days and you have to leave it at the front door because you can't come into the house and be like, oh, I'm so stressed because of work. And the other person, well, the other person's stressed. Yeah, you could talk about it. But at the same time, is like when you're home, you're home. When you're at work, you're at work. Gotcha. Yeah. And so when you're finding success personally, yeah. hopefully that's going to uplift you professionally and vice versa. Yeah, because think about it, you're just trying to build, I mean, I always say like just trying to find something to build my empire with, right? But that's in a positive state. So if you're positive and they're positive, then it should translate into both your personal and business. Awesome. So Jen, this conversation has been so fun and really well, thank insightful. You. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, you mentioned your, uh, your website. If someone wanted to contact you or learn more about the Dating Advisory Board, can you share with that again? Sure. Yes. Um, if you just go on the datingadvisoryboard.com, you can contact me. And um, and I look forward to hearing your feedback. All right. Real quick. Top three tips for All business right. professionals. Top three. Know your market. <laughs> know your target market in business and in dating. Number two, know what your mission statement is, like, as I get the reflection in the mirror on point. And number three, I said, just be human. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. The Better Business Bureau is deeply committed to building and advancing a better marketplace, a trusted marketplace for all, because trust always matters. For the Better Business Bureau and as your host of The Bistro, I'm Elena Spinola, and I thank you for listening, and I encourage you to give us your feedback on this episode. Until next time, it's been my pleasure discussing better business with you. You just enjoyed The Bistro Podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com.
That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureau, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service. 